<laughs> okay. Have we started yet? Nope. We're, oh, wait, good. we're waiting on we're you. We're waiting Thanks. on you. Yes. Here. Would you call the roll, please? Danielle McKenzie. Here. Jason Blair. Here. Melissa Hunt. Here. Louis Williams. Here. Adam Webb. Mark Ham. Here. Glenn Lewis. Here. Would you uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item number two is the consent docket. Item A is receive and approve the minutes of the regular city council meeting held December 6, 2021. Item B, approve a revision to the job description for aquatics and fitness center coordinator to aquatics coordinator in the parks and recreation department and assign it to pay grade 112 of the salary table approved by city council on June 20th, 2016. This position was approved in the city of Moore fiscal year 2022 budget and staff request an effective date of January 1st, 2022. Item C, approve a revision to the job description for fitness manager to fitness coordinator in the park and recreation department and assign it to pay grade 110 of the salary table approved by the city council on June 20th, 2016. The, pay, the position was approved in the city of Moore fiscal year 2022 annual budget and the staff requests an effective date of January 1st, 2022. Item D, approve a revision to the seasonal job description for aquatics manager uh, to aquatic supervisor in the Parks and Recreation Department and assign it to pay grade 105 of the salary table provided by the City Council on June 20th, 2016. This position was approved by the City of Moore fiscal year 2022 annual budget and the staff requests an effective date of January 1st, 2022. Item E, approve a revision to the part-time job description for child care coordinator to child care specialist in the park and recreation department and assign to pay grade 102 of the salary table approved by city council on June 20th, 2016. This position was approved by the city of Moore fiscal year 2022 annual budget and the staff requests an effective date of January 1st, 2022. Item F is approve a revision to the part-time job description for child care specialist to child care attendant in the Parks and Recreation Department and assign it to pay grade 101 of the salary table approved by the City Council on June 20th, 2016. This position was approved in the City of Moore fiscal year 2022 annual budget and staff request an effective date of January 1st, 2022. Item G is approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2021-2022 in the amount of $2,709,544.24. Make a motion that we approve the consent. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Danielle McKenzie. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes. Mark Ham. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item carries. Item number three is consider acceptance of the cities of Moore annual, or excuse me, acceptance of the city of Moore's financial audit for fiscal year ended June 30th, 2021. Mayor and Council, we have Bob Dillon with Dillon and Associates here to present his summary of the audit and to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Betty. Uh, Mayor Lewis and Council, we recently completed our annual audit of the City of Moore, and uh, there's a second audit report that deals with the federal expenditures, federal award notices. Uh, the, we issued an unmodified opinion on the city audit as a whole. 
which indicates that, in our opinion, the financial statements are fairly stated without any material misstatements. We, on the compliance and internal control reports, uh, we did have one finding that dealt with that dealt with a bank account that had a balance in excess of the SD, FDIC limits. Uh, the state statutes for Oklahoma require that the city either receive pledged assets or keep their accounts under the FDIC limit. Uh, the bank corrected this problem on its own during the first two weeks of July. So they have a monitoring process. They just were a little bit behind the curve. So our recommendation was the city and the bank uh, modify their monitoring process so that we make sure that we comply with this requirement to keep our uh, bank accounts underneath the pledged assets. And the city and the bank have both been working on this, and I think that they've resolve this matter. We didn't have any findings related to the audit on the federal awards this year. Uh, on the federal awards, your total expenditures on was about six million dollars. Of that, the CARES Act was about 4.7 million dollars. We also completed the uh, estimate of needs and calculated the millage requirement for your property tax. Uh, the millage came in at 15.42 uh, per 1,000 of assessed value. This was a very minor decrease from last year, so it's been fairly constant for the last few years. Just a couple of highlights I'd like to hit on the audit, and then I'll be happy to take any questions. Your sales and use tax was actually up this last year by about 15 percent, or about 5.7 million dollars. Uh, the total sales and use tax was about 43 million dollars for the year. You had uh, a healthy carryover in your general fund at the end of June, the, which are funds that are being carried over for this current budget year that you're in. The carryover was about $13 million, which is about 27% of your annual revenues. That's, that's fairly healthy. That is, your, your general fund was actually up about $5 million for the year. So we had increases both in the general fund and the more public works authority. The public works authority, uh, their net position increased by about $4.7 million to a total of about 28 million dollars. The city's long-term debt increased by about 21 million dollars due to uh, a bond issue and I think there was also a note issue if I remember right. Your total obligations not counting pension and and risk management obligations was about 127 million dollars. Related to this we we uh, do a calculation on your loan covenants to make sure that your net revenue available for these annual payments on the loans is in compliance with the loan covenants. The required coverage is 1.25 times, so your revenue has to be more than 1.25 times your debt service. Your actual coverage was uh, 4.37, which indicates fairly healthy coverage ratio. Uh, any questions from council? Appreciate the job you do. Sounds thank like you very much. Uh, thank, thank the staff. They've always been very helpful with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do I need a motion to okay, accept? do we have a motion to approve or to accept this? Make a motion we accept the financial audit. All right. Second. Second. Thank, you. thank you. We got a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item number, f item carries. Item number four is consider approval of a revocable permit for various structures encroaching on utility easements located in the Grace Point Edition. Uh, Mayor and Council, um, this item stems from several um, uh, probably more than several carports that have been constructed in the Grace Point um, addition, which is the senior housing complex. 
um, over the years. Um, this first came to our attention um, several years ago uh, when they first started being constructed without permits. Uh, during that time, we did have a conversation with the developer uh, and it was determined that these carports um, added to the quality of life for that addition to get the cars out from the weather and elements. Uh, so we decided that uh, in, uh, in, a, uh, in exchange for a revocable permit, we would allow these structures to continue to be constructed. Uh, so um, this addition is, is nearing the end of its uh, development. So we're now asking for the revocable permit to be approved. Do we have a motion? motion. Make a motion. All right. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote? Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number five is consider approval of application for stop loss insurance with Ironshore Indemnity Incorporated to be administered by Assured Benefits Administrators Incorporated, effective date January 1st, 2022 through January 1st, 2023. Mayor and Council, for many years the city has used U.S. Fire as our health insurance stop loss carrier, but over the last few years our premiums have been increasing. With the change to United Healthcare as our network, which you approved at your last meeting, we had an opportunity to look at some new options for that stop loss coverage. One of those options was Dallas Risk Management, Ironshore, administered through Assured Benefits Administrators, our current TPA. I do have Daniel Summers from Gallagher here to provide additional information if you have any specific questions. Otherwise, staff recommends your approval. So this is a savings by going with this? It's an adjust. It's an adjustment. Um, everything's going up. This is less going up. Less going up. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I make a motion to approve. Second. All right. Thank you. Thank you both. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on this item? If not, would you call for the vote? Louis Williams. Yes. Mark Ham. Yes. Danielle McKenzie. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item carries. Item number six is considered declaring 20 radar units and 40 in-camera, ca uh, excuse me, in-car camera systems that are no longer serviceable as surplus and authorization for the destruction or donation of said items. Mayor and Council, this is kind of a fall cleaning, if you will. Uh, we're doing an inventory um, check and just going through some older equipment that we have had surplused in our own state for some time. It's been in our uh, garage area. So cleaning that out and kind of updating our overall inventory for the police department. Uh, these items were recommended uh, to be surplused and or donated to another agency that could make better use of them. The 40 cameras are all 15 years old and just there's really nothing that can be done with them other than just to be uh, disposed of. The radar systems are in various states of disrepair but if somebody wanted to take components from this one or that one and, and put them together they might be able to get a working radar that they would have to get calibrated uh, we've scavenged what we could to uh, use for our own purposes continuing forward but inevitably this is just equipment that's extended its life motion right. approved all right thank you second thank you we have a motion and a second. And she, but for the record, our all of our radar units work perfectly. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, sir. Did you call for the vote? Please? Mark Ham. Yes. Danielle McKenzie. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item carries. Item number seven is consider approval of an agreement with the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma using Community Development Block Grant COVID-19 funds. Uh, Mayor and Council, um, last year on December 7th, 2020, an allocation of 100,000 of CDBG COVID funding was allocated to the Regional Food Bank um, for the Food and Resource Center here in Moore. Originally, these funds were allocated for an additional cooler uh, freezer for the center. Um, once they move forward with the project um, and started to get quotes, they uh, realized that it was going to be way over budget. So they have shifted their focus to uh, 
reconstructing their parking lot. Currently it has a lot of drainage issues um, and it's just in, a, in really bad shape. Uh, a lot of elderly people utilize the food and resource center so it's hard for them to get into the door safely. Um, so they have asked if they could reallocate these funds to reconstruction their parking lot. Make a motion we approve. Second. Can we do that? Yes. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please, if there's no other discussion? Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Lynn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item number eight is consider approval of a contract addendum for the disposition and development agreement with the Curve Apartments LP and NHS More Curve LLC. Uh, Mayor and Council, the Curve Apartments has requested an extension for construction. Um, the construction completion date in the last addendum was December 31st, 2021 for all buildings, parkland, and other public improvements. This addendum will extend the construction completion dates for Building B to January 31st of 2022, Building C to February 28th, 2022, Building A to April 30th, 2022, and all parkland and other improvements to July 31st, 2022. Supply chain disruptions, limited product availability, fluctuations in material pricing, front end labor shortage, back end employee turnover, and city inspection issues are reasons for delay. There continues to be Material shortage due to production delays. Production delays continue due to, sh to labor shortage. There's also been a significant labor shortage for on-site contractors as well. Uh, for building B, the final inspection for mechanical, plumbing, and electrical have passed as of today. Um, with fire and sprinkler um, having uh, a partial final inspection. Um, final inspection for the for the overall building was performed today but did not pass. The building official anticipates completing another final building and fire inspection tomorrow. He's confident a certificate of occupancy will be issued by Wednesday. Um, there's not much left to complete for building C and the building official anticipates a certificate of occupancy. Um, this extension is within the CDBGDR expenditure deadline and staff recommends approval. So right now they're running ahead of schedule on yes. both building B and C. So we have pretty yes. good confidence in the schedule. What is yes. the CBDG guideline? Um, we have with since COVID, um, we actually have till September of 2023. Okay. Originally was September 2022. So okay, either way, so we're we have. Good. And, and I'm to obviously going to vote to approve this, but I don't believe all of this is because of supply chain <laughs> issues. A lot of it is because of the contractors. Just for the record. So I'll make a motion to approve. A second. <laughs> and it's six like, project okay. managers probably <laughs> weigh in here somewhere. So. <laughs> Do what? And six project managers yeah. weigh yes, in here yeah. somewhere. Yes. So. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion on this item? We, if not, would you call for the vote, please? Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item number, uh, item carries. Item number nine, we've asked, been asked to table this. This actually goes on the MPWA and we'll be back on the next meeting. Randy, do I need to read this off or just table it? Yeah, somebody can make a motion. Okay, somebody want to make a motion? Make a motion that we table second. item nine. All right, thank you. And do you want to second that? Second. All right, thank you. We have a motion and a second to table. Would you call for the vote, please? Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes, so item carries. Item number 10 uh, is discussed, considering if deemed appropriate, <coughs> determine that Sergeant Jeremy Lewis of the Moore Public, or excuse me, it should say Moore Police Department, acted in good faith and within the course of his employment and appoint Blaine Nice to represent him in Shakar versus Lewis case number CIV-21-1151 pursuant to Oklahoma statutes 23-101 and 23-102, excuse me. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, this is a litigation uh, brought by uh, Mr. Malik Shakur. Uh, Mr. Shakur first started out by 
suing a host of people, plus the city of Moore, the city of Moore Police Department, uh, and uh, uh, Sergeant Lewis. That uh, action was dismissed. Uh, the court uh, gave him an opportunity to amend his complaint to try and find something. Uh, that was amended, that was dismissed also. Uh, he then brought this third action here uh, against uh, Sergeant Lewis. Uh, all the allegations are the same. Uh, nothing's changed. Uh, it primarily stems from a guardianship issue where Mr. Shakur was arrested. Uh, those charges were subsequently dismissed by uh, Cleveland County District Attorney uh, because there wasn't a real basis to continue with those. Uh, I think Sergeant Lewis's main involvement was he answered questions during a news interview uh, so there's there's nothing to this but we need uh, you to approve representation for him make a motion we approve Sir. Make a motion. all right thank you thank you both uh, just for the record sergeant Lewis and I are not uh, related even though I wouldn't mind if we were uh, <laughs> would you call for the vote please Melissa Hunt yes Louis Williams yes Mark Ham yes Danielle McKenzie yes Jason Blair yes Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item, <coughs> excuse me. Item carries. <coughs> item number 11 is consider ordinance number 998-21 amending part 10 chapter 4 article B section 10-414 of the Moore Municipal Code by establishing a new specific prohibition for operating or permitting to be operated in the device designed for sound production amplification or reproduction including but not limited to any radio musical instrument phonograph equipment electrical audio equipment tape recorder loudspeaker and other similar device at any city-owned park that exceeds 65 decibels measured uh, at the boundary of any city-owned park <coughs> providing for severability and providing for a repealer yes mayor and council uh, I'm sure the council is aware of and if you're not uh, we the city receives complaints uh, from residents that live around uh, Buck Thomas Park mostly uh, for use of the audio equipment during the youth sports uh, activities uh, and before this change uh, was in place, uh, it was kind of a subjective type uh, situation uh, on being able to hear the music, uh, hear the announcements uh, inside, uh, inside one of the residences that surround the park. Uh, Brooks decided or asked me uh, to amend this ordinance uh, by placing a 65 decibel limit uh, and I went and asked him how much is <laughs> 65 I had no idea uh, but uh, he uh, did indicate that uh, equipment that can be purchased equipment that can be used to measure this uh, at a 65 decibel level that is what might or could be heard inside of a residence. So if it's less than that 65, uh, it wouldn't be a violation. Okay, so, oh, I'm sorry. And Councilman Ham and I went out and listened to it, stood at the back of the park and kind of felt like that was a fair yeah. number. They had a, had a yeah, meter, had, yeah, had a meter, a meter that there. could measure the sound from that. And uh -huh. it, so, it seemed and 65 very reasonable. at the edge of the park, is that correct? Yes. 
Okay, so any any much, of the boundaries, any of the boundaries right. of the park. Boundaries at the edge right. of the so park. So it's much louder. It's louder than 65. Yep. Just when I Google that, because I have no idea what that sounds like. A vacuum cleaner, 70 decibels, but it's at the edge, at the edge. of the boundary of the park. Yes. Yep. Okay, so yeah. all the way out in the outfield type thing. Yep. Okay. I have a question. On Saturdays, every every Saturday at noon, we blow the storm sirens, and that's going to be way more than 65 decibels. Are we going to exempt storm sirens? I believe there is exemptions in there that are already in the ordinances. This would just change it for uh, Buck Thomas Park and the sporting events. Well, you know the emails and phone calls we get, <laughs> and you know that the first thing they're going to do after Saturday is come up here and want charges filed against the city. Well, and, let, and let's so, be fair, no. it's, it's the soft, it's softball. That's, yeah, it's right. not everybody that uses yeah, the park. I, I so. You get those complaints as much as that. Say, say that again, sorry. Right. Great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. I make so, a motion to approve. Okay, we'll make a motion. Them. Okay, thank you very much. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Louis Williams? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Lynn Lewis? Yes, item carries. Item number 12 is considered ordinance number 997-21, amending part 10, chapter four, article B, section 10-4154, by amending the definition of organized sporting events, providing for severability, inviting, providing for a repealer. Uh, Mayor and Council, this uh, amendment is necessary to be able to enforce what you just passed. Uh, in the original noise ordinance, uh, there was a complete exception for what could be known as an organized sporting event. Uh, so in order to be able to enforce a 65 decibel reading, we had to change the definition of organized sporting event. Motion to approve. Second. All right. Thank you both. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Mark Cam. Yes. Danielle McKenzie. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes. Item Gary's. And just just to note, Mayor Lewis, on page 150 of your agenda, it lists the exceptions. Okay. Thanks. I'll list that later. All right. I will. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we'll recess the city council meeting and convene the more public works authority meeting. Item number 14 is the consent docket. Did we, we Did skip 13? Oh, 13. sorry, I skipped one. All right, sorry about that. Item 13 is consider authorizing the purchase of Cisco Duo software services and hardware tokens for Microsoft Office 365 multi-factor authentication from the Chickasaw Telecom in the amount of $30,214.50 using Oklahoma State contract number SW11, or excuse me, 1006C. Sorry about that. Uh, Mayor and Council, this is for, um, as it says, multi factor authentication for our Office 365 email, uh, which we have in the cloud. It is being done at the highly recommended of our cyber insurance. Um, it is so highly recommended that they have said, since we don't have this active, that our premiums are going up this year until we can get that fixed. Um, uh, so you'll see later on that uh, Brian has, will be coming up here and, and that the premiums are going up on the cyber insurance. Um, he can answer more of the cyber insurance side of it, um, but this is to correct that problem. This is obvious, this is something that's been coming on the pipe for about six months. Um, and we didn't find out about it affecting the cyber insurance until about a month ago. Um, so we've been trying to scramble and find a way to fix this. So would this be an annual licensing fee? About 20,000 of that would be the annual license, and the other 10,000 is the hardware tokens. Okay. Well, I don't know anything about that, so I appreciate you guys taking care of it. <laughs> Do we have a motion? I make a motion, we approve. Second. Thank you, thank you both. Okay. Would you uh, call for the vote, please? Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Mark Cam? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. 
At this time, we will recess the city council meeting and convene the more public works authority meeting. Item number 14 is a receive and approve the minutes of the regular more public works authority meeting held December 6, 2021. Item B is ratify action of the city council regarding application for stop loss insurance with Ironshore Indemnity Incorporated to be administered by Assured Benefits Administrators, Inc., effective January 1st, 2022 through January 1st, 2023. Item C is approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2021 to 2022 in the amount of $932,000. $284.76. Motion to approve. All right. Second. Thank you. Thank you both. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the uh, consent docket? Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Lynn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number 15 is consider approval of a lease agreement with Waterman Group LLC for the use of a water well located in Cleveland Heights. Chairman and trustees, uh, this agreement would last uh, 15 years. It would have a, an additional uh, an, uh, uh, single option to renew for an additional 10 years under the same terms of this agreement, or of the first 15 years. Um, the, the city would, uh, ha has agreed to a minimum volume of 3 million gallons uh, per each month for this agreement. And uh, that's uh, with our distribution system and the way this is tied in, that would not be a problem for us to be able to use that. Um, if, uh, or in addition, the city uh, assumes all obligations and responsibilities for uh, operations and maintenance uh, as if this was our pump <coughs> at a station or in well station. Um, it should be noted that. Um, uh, any maintenance or repairs that we do or capital investments, we would be reimbursed for those uh, uh, as part of the agreement. Um, uh, if approved, uh, this would start in, uh, uh, or, or this would, our first payments would be uh, beginning uh, at about $2 in, uh, per thousand gallons, which is 90% of what we already pay. Uh, for Oklahoma City, I believe it's about two dollars and twenty-two cents per thousand. So we're, we receive this agreement allows a ten percent savings from everything that we buy from this, and we would, we would recommend that we approve the agreement. All right, thank you. Make a motion. We approve. Second. All right. Thanks, Bill uh, Waterman was a uh, an important council member here for a long time and a very valuable one, and I appreciate the work that that he did on this. And I uh, can't say enough about the guy. So anyway, with uh, that being said, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, would you call for the vote, please? Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number 16 is consider approval of a property and contents insurance policy through OMAG an excess property and contents policy through Homeland Insurance and er, Company and excess flood policy through Voyager Indemnity Insurance Company and physical damage coverage uh, for the city sanitation trucks, mobile command unit, and fire trucks through the Great American with a total premium for all policies in the amount of $499,612 with Russell Hollingsworth of Dillingham Group insurance as agent. Uh, Chairman and trustees, uh, this is a renewal of our property insurance policy. We have roughly $171 million worth of property that we insure. Um, this renewal uh, consists of our main property uh, and contents policy through OMAG, uh, which covers the first $100 million uh, worth of property. We then have an excess property and contents policy through Homeland uh, Insurance for the remaining $70 million of property. We also have an excess flood policy through Voyager Indemnity, and we also have physical damage coverage for our sanitation trucks, our mobile command unit, and beginning this year, uh, our fire trucks through Great American Insurance. Um, our premium is $499,612, which is an increase of $29,000 from last year. 
uh, but 22,000 of that increase is because we're going to be adding the fire trucks. And you might ask, well, how do we insure the fire trucks now? Currently, we have our fire trucks insured through the fire department insurance program, which is through the state. That policy right now is about $25,000. We can get better coverage, and it's less expensive if we combine it with our sanitation trucks and our uh, mobile command unit. Um, so what our plan is, is that if we do, in fact, renew and add the fire trucks, we will cancel the insurance through FDIP. I will get a refund. I'm ex expecting around $15,000 or so as a rebate from what we paid uh, in our renewal for the fire trucks. Um, we'll also be receiving a rebate of $29,243 from OMAG because uh, we do not have any claims through property insurance in 2020, and we're also eligible for another rebate next year because we didn't have any claims this year either. Um, so if we do everything correctly here on this, uh, we can cancel the fire trucks uh, with the FDIP and actually save some money on this. Great job. Great job. Motion to approve. All right. Thank Second. You. Thank you both. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion on this item? If not, would you call for the vote, please? Louis Williams? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Same. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Item carries. Item number 17 is consider <coughs> approval of a cyber insurance policy through underwriters of Lloyd's with a total premium of $53,000. $530 with Russell Hollingsworth of Dillingham Insurance as the agent. Uh, Chairman and trustees, this is a renewal of our cyber insurance policy. Uh, there's been some major changes um, in the cyber insurance market <laughs> since the last time uh, we uh, renewed this, uh, this policy. Uh, our agent contacted, I believe, eight or nine companies, and all eight declined to cover us at all uh, because we did not have a multi-factor authentication process in place um, and the only pol the only company that would even insure us would be if the company that we currently have is a renewal but the premium would go from 35,000 to 53,000 uh, so what we are planning on doing is renewing at the high 53,000 get our tokens going and, and get uh, the multi-factor authentication as quickly as we, po as we can. Our goal is to get that around March or April is what I'm being told. At that point in time, we will then cancel our insurance premium at 53,000, ask our agent to go ahead and get quotes again from the other eight companies, and we are expecting to get a policy probably around 25 to 30,000 is what we are expecting. Um, and I'll come back and I'll be able to uh, explain our choices then at that point, but it looks like March or April is when we'll be able to get that in place. So that will give us multi-factor authentication on what pieces of our network? It's my understanding it's the email. Well, you better. So we have, we have multi-factor on the domain? The, the, what they are, what they, the cyber insurance says that we need to have that on is that we need to have that on our email, our Office 365 email. They also say that we need to have it on the various other pieces of our domain, which we do have it on. Okay. The part that we don't have it on is our, is our Office 365 do email. Do we use a VPN of any kind? Yes, and we do have multi-factor authentication on that. Okay. All right. So that, yes, the only piece that we don't currently have it on is, the, is the, uh, um, our email in the cloud. Okay. Um, and that's what they're saying that we, that was their that, and that's what the holdup is. Very good, is. thank you. I know enough to know I don't know. What was said there? <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's like you're speaking another language. <laughs> it's Pretty all good. Is on that <laughs> one. Okay. So do we have a motion? I make a motion. We approve. All right. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Thank you. Would you call for the vote, please, if there's no other discussion? Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Staying. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Glenn Lewis. Yes, item carries. At this time, we'll recess the Moore Public Works Authority meeting and convene <coughs> the Moore Risk Management meeting. Item number 18 is the consent docket. Item A is receive and approve the minutes of the regular Moore Risk Management meeting held December the 6th, 2021. Item B is approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2021-2022 in the amount of $326,095.63. Make a motion that we approve the consent docket. All right, second. thank you. Thank you both. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for that vote, please? Danielle McKenzie? Yes. 
Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Lynn Lewis? Yes, item carries. At this time, we'll recess the more risk management meeting and convene the more economic development authority meeting. This is normally Adam. Oh, is this me? Yeah, I think oh. so. Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say that's that's you or Adam. I can't remember. Roll call, please. Danielle McKenzie? Here. Jason Blair? Here. Melissa Hunt? Here. Glenn Lewis? Here. Louis Williams? Here. Adam Webb? Mark Ham. Here. Item 20 will be the consent docket. Receive and approve the minutes of the regular Moore Economic Development Authority meeting held November 15th, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. Had a motion and a second. Call vote, please. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Glenn Lewis? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. The consent docket's been approved. Now we will recess the more economic development authority meeting and reconvene the city council meeting. All right, thank you. Let the record reflect that all the members that were present are still present. Item uh, 21 is new business citizen forum for items not on the agenda. There's no one signed up. Would anyone like to speak? Anybody? The manager's gone, so any employees want to speak? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, and we. I, Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to make a funny thing too. Oh, well, <laughs> item B. Would be, really item B is yours. Kind of, <laughs> so, any trustees? I was just going to say we got a new city manager, but he already did a little joke. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just ruined it. My, I've been looking all meeting, all oh. for the whole meeting for that. Oh man. Okay, sorry. Never mind. Any any items from any council members or trustees? I have a question for Sue. What's with the um, alligator head floating in the? Does it keep the geese away? <laughs> In Central Park, there's an alligator head. If that doesn't work, are we bringing in a gator? It, it's working. It absolutely is working. Nice. <laughs> well, that was the or question. Nice. <laughs> yep. So, so we, we commented on Sunday when we were walking, we stood there and we looked and we were like, but why would it be on this side and not this side? And why are there? And so I said I was going to ask. So that's interesting. I put out a public affairs contest on names. Well, first we thought maybe it was a, some, like a joke somebody threw it in, but then we were like, no, it's anchored down. Like it's <laughs> very real, interesting. Get a real gator. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Yeah, I think we're going to use it Fox too. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Ah, thank you. Yeah. The new equipment looks really good at the station. Looks good. Yeah. All right. Any items for the city manager, trust manager? Uh, other than we'd just like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. And Brooks promised me he wouldn't throw me to the Gators, but I guess <laughs> that's not true. So. <laughs> well, okay. Merry Christmas, you guys. Randy, uh, we should call the uh, gator Randy. Randy Brown. <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item 22 is adjourned. So moved. Okay. Oh, yeah. Merry Christmas. Oh. All right, let's go for the vote. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Mark Cam? Yes. Lynn Lewis? Yes, we're adjourned. Are they the one in NFL Network tonight? Uh, they are.